Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. I've been doing some videos recently having to do with uh, the retrieves that I utilize certain baits for, and I've gotten a couple of requests to do it for a lipless crankbait. Uh, you know, a lipless has become one of my go-to baits. I use it everywhere, whether that's, you know, fishing deep on natural lakes or ledge lakes where I'm, I'm imparting a yo-yo action, or whether I'm fishing super shallow water early spring, or river, high current areas. I mean, a lipless is a, a really diverse bait in terms of where you can use it. And it generates a lot of bites, regardless of species you're fishing for. I mean, not just the bass species, but pike, walleye, you catch everything on a lipless. White bass, striper, they all eat it. It's a really good bait for generating bites. But it's also a bait that gets bit on a straight retrieve but there's things you can do to generate a lot of additional strikes. And that's what I want to show you guys today. I've got a handful of retrieves that I like to throw lipless for. You know, I've got one right here. This is the Berkeley War Pig, one of my favorites. Uh, just a really good lipless. It works all over the place. Comes in a lot of really nice colors. From a rod and reel setup, I like to throw this on straight fluorocarbon. This is 15 pound, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon. Uh, I think the fluorocarbon, it does a couple of things. I think you get more bite, more bites when you're throwing fluorocarbon because it is invisible and I don't believe it creates much sound coming through the water. But more than anything, when you're talking about a crankbait, you want to have a little bit of stretch when that fish goes to inhale the bait. When it bites the bait, you want to get those hooks into the fish's mouth. And if you're throwing this on braid, you're gonna get a lot of a lot of short strikes because the fish isn't getting the bait fully. The other the other concern I have when throwing this on braid is that when you're fighting a fish, you have a greater chance of pulling the treble hooks away from the fish. So a lot of times you'll you'll hook a fish on the outside of the mouth, and if you're pulling too hard with the braid, which has no forgiveness, you're gonna end up pulling that bait free from the fish a lot of times, and that's that's a concern so i don't feel like i lose as many fish when i'm throwing fluorocarbon line and i feel good about being able to rip this bait out of grass if i'm fishing heavy grass and still be able to fish it clean now you're going to be able to get it through that grass much better with braid but i think there's a lot of times when that braid is being a hindrance to you just my personal opinion i know a lot of you out there are probably disagreeing with that from a rod and reel setup I like to go with a, a lighter action, medium heavy, fast, fast action, but on the lighter side, a little slower side, uh, but still a medium heavy quality rod. This is a seven foot three medium heavy. It's an MHX 873. So it's a seven foot three, three power rod uh, graphite. It is a uh, great all around rod, but I really love it for fishing a lipless crankbait because it's still got it's got the the fast action to allow me to snap this out of the grass clean but it's still on the lighter side of a you know a medium heavy action rod so that i'm not going to rip the bait out of the fish's mouth when i set the hook or when i'm fighting the fish so that's my preference uh in this case this is a, a abu garcia revo mgx rod just a high-end all-purpose real um it's a seven, uh, seven to three ratio, I believe. Just a, a phenomenal rod. Cast great, great drag, just all around really good rod. Uh, and it kind of fits the need in this case for what I want to do. Generally, I'm going to go with a higher gear ratio reel because I feel like I can do things from burning the bait and still be able to slow it down if I really want to, you know, take my time and slow the bait down. But that's where we're at from a setup standpoint, guys. Let's go down to the water and we'll check it out and I'll show you the retrieves that I like to use with a lipless. Okay guys, we've got our war pig down here. I've got three primary retrieves that I throw a lipless in. The first is my favorite and this is more of a, a year round technique and it's simply when you're throwing it out, it's just a yo-yo. You let it hit the bottom. You're watching your line fall when it hits the bottom. You're just giving a nice pop of the rod. Not a super snap like you would with a jig, but just a nice pop to get it up off the bottom. And then you wanna, you wanna keep that slack lining. So when that bait's falling, and we're pretty shallow right here, but when it's falling, you wanna try to keep a bow in your line 
so that you can see those bites that happen when it comes down. So that that is a year-round approach. I love yo-yo in a trap. It, it works great on ledges. It works great at grass. It's just a great, great bait or great, great way to retrieve it. Next up, you've got what I would consider like the snap. So you throw it in the grass. This is one fishing grass. You let it get into the grass and then you're really exploding it out of that grass. Cause you know when that bait settles, the likelihood is that it's gonna be stuck in the, in the weed. It's gonna have a treble hook in the weed. So you gotta create a really good explosion. And that's what frees the bait and frees those hooks. So there's a difference here between the first two. The first one is just kind of a straight yo-yo where you're just kind of bringing the rod up, getting it up to make some noise. With the snap, it's gonna be similar to when you're stroking a jig. You wanna have a little bit of slack line, and then you're gonna literally explode that bait up out of the grass to keep those hooks clean. So those are two distinct retrieves that are completely separate from each other, but still similar. Uh, I prefer that snap is in grass. When I'm, when I'm just kind of using that simple you know, let it go to the bottom, a nice steady retrieve. That's a really good approach for fishing, you know, a hard bottom area, whether you're in rock, shell beds, ledge fishing, that type of thing. Early in the spring, when you've got new grass coming up where the grass is only a few inches off the bottom, I like to throw it out. And at that point, I'm gonna try to feather this bait through the bottom. So I'm, I'm gonna actually do a, a, a slow pull but I'm going to keep the rod tip down and I'm just trying to, to bring it through the grass with the nose of the bait down, plowing through it. And I'll, I'll mix up some, some sweeps versus just straight retrieve as long as I know my bait's on the bottom. There are in the spring, that's an, a deadly, deadly thing to do with a lipless. You're almost, it's almost to the point you don't even know how much it's rattling. Like it's just a slow, you know, you're grinding it on the bottom, you know, and sometimes you'll give it a pull, but you're just, you just want to keep constant contact on the bottom. And that will generate a lot of bites when those fish are in a much more lethargic mood because it's earlier in, you know, in the year with much cooler water temperatures. So that's three approaches. One, super slow on the bottom the whole time. You know, the other two are more of a stroking. The last is just pretty much a straight retrieve a little bit burned, you know, with a stop in the middle every once in a while. This is good for like schoolers. You're throwing it out, keeping it moving, stop it, keep it move, stop it. But you're imparting the action again with the reel. You know, I'm not doing anything really to, to move the rod. I'm just kind of burning it through an area covering water. This is really good for schooling fish. It's also really good if you're fishing currented areas with some rock and you got some rapids. You're just trying to Keep it moving, give the fish something not to see that well, but when you stop it, that's when you'll get your bit because they're tracking it, they stop it right in front of the fish and they're gonna hit it at that point. Those are my primary retrieves with the rattle trap. I don't normally cast and retrieve straight in. You need to impart some key stop and go periods in the retrieve to generate those reaction strikes. And that's what makes a lipless like this war pig so good. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, share it on social media, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you like these types of videos, I'll do more of them. Just throw it in the comment section, let me know. Thanks for watching.